it, 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 it hits home when I was preparing for this, especially after going there, just thinking like, man, you know, we're, I'm going to get into this a little bit later, so I don't want to, I don't want to steal the thunder too early, but it talks about God's thoughts towards us and, and, you know, how good the Lord is to us and, and how amazing, you know, the, the changes that God can make in your life and the, the truth that he gives us and the directions he gives us to follow is all for our benefit. It's all for our good. He loves us. He cares about, us, he thinks about us. I mean, that's why we're here. You know, I don't want to ever lose sight. Why are we even gathering together? You know, you can, it can become too habitual to just fall into a routine and almost do things robotically, right? In the Christian life, you got all these things like, man, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this. And those are good things. Look, I believe in having standards. I believe in making sure that, you know, we're trying to keep ourselves from sin and, and, and we're, we're doing as much as we can and, and trying to keep that. But don't let yourself just slip into just being in like autopilot mode and forgetting the whole reason behind, you know, the, the spirit behind it, the Lord behind it. And, and, and it's not just becoming a set of do's and don'ts and set of rules, but, you know, we're serving a savior and should be excited about that and should be thankful for that. And, you know, as we read the scripture tonight, you know, let that sink in and just hit home. Verse number one, let's get into the chapter. Verse number one, the Bible reads, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. And this is one of the things I think that we need to remember anytime, especially when we're in trouble and we need help and we're seeking God to help us, that we wait patiently for the Lord because his timing is not always our timing. And we don't want to be too quick to run to the, to the answers of the flesh, to, to our, just our own uh, works and our own instruments to try to get things done when we're in help, but that we can patiently wait for the Lord to, to come in and, and not doubt and not waver and not lose our faith and not get discouraged, but that we wait patiently because the Bible says that he, you know, he hears us. There's a reason why Jesus Christ said, ask and you shall receive, you know, and, and that God is willing and, and listening and ready and wants to hear your, faith, your, your, your prayers unto him. And like he says here, I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. We want to, you know, we want to be the children. I, you know, I bring up this analogy all the time because it's in scripture so much. It calls, the Bible refers to the father, God, as being a father, right? And we know there's a father, the son, and the Holy Ghost. But we also know that we are spiritually born again. We become children of God through Jesus Christ. And that we are adopted children and that, and that, that we have... We, we become heirs and have an inheritance with the Lord. So there's nothing wrong about calling the Lord our father also and having that father son relationship. And when we bring that up, I think of, you know, as us all being children, waiting for your father patiently, right? Because we know how kids have a tendency to act when they want something. I want it now. I want to give, give it to me now. I don't want this now. I don't want to wait for it, right? But the good child is going to be able to wait patiently. And you know what? The one who waits patiently is going to get the best reward too. And the father's going to, going to listen to them and incline their ear unto them um, and, and answer better for them. That's what I believe. Look at verse number two. The Bible says, He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. I mean, talk about reasons to praise the Lord right here. And, and again, Psalm, we're reading this as it's written. We're reading this as the word of God, but it's a song. The book of Psalms is a song book, and this is meant to be sung. And what great doctrine we have, but what great reason to praise. He brought me up out of an horrible pit. And this reminds me of the verse I was having such a hard time trying to quote this just before service today, John 5, 24, literally my favorite verse in the entire Bible. And I'm going, you know, just, just fumbling with it before service. But what, what I love about that verse, the Bible says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into, in, into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. And that last part of the verse is passed from death unto life. Why are we passed from death unto life? Because before you got saved as a sinner, you're headed towards death. You're headed towards hell. 
You're headed towards that horrible pit that the Bible refers to as the bottomless pit of hell. And that is what we deserve as sinners. And that's what we're bound to until you find Christ and put your trust in him, put your faith in him, and he frees you from that disastrous uh, punishment and he'll lift you up out of that miry clay and he'll take you from being headed towards death unto life and establishes you and sets you on that solid rock. And when your faith is on that solid rock, you can't be moved. 